And I thought you'd come out here today to support Justina because we are going to win seats all over Ontario, all over Canada, because people are tired of Justin Trudeau, scandal played government, in it for himself, in it for his rich friends and well connected elite. And they are excited about electing a conservative government that puts you first, that puts more money back in your pocket because it's time for you to get ahead. This ballot question is so simple. Who do you trust to leave more money in your pocket for you to get ahead? And I'll, when we're talking about trust, we have to bring up the SNC-Lavalin scandal because it is still the case that Justin Trudeau refuses to allow the officials in his office to talk to the RCMP so they can do their job. He is still doing everything he can to keep the facts hidden. Does that sound like someone that doesn't have anything to hide? When we talk about trust, we can think about the broken promises. The fact that he said that he would balance the budget or that the budget would balance itself in 2019. Instead, massive deficits, which mean only one thing. After the election, when Justin Trudeau doesn't need your vote, but he still needs your money, those taxes are going up even higher. Over 80% of Canadian families pay, over 80% of middle class Canadian families pay more in taxes today than they did in 2015. And his carbon tax is raising the cost of everything, from gasoline to home heating to groceries. And when Justin Trudeau was asked about the high cost of gas, his answer was that that was exactly what he wanted. Well, millionaire liberals like Justin Trudeau might not mind paying higher gas prices, but I know that hard-working Canadian individuals and families, they don't like to pay higher gas prices. That's why job number one is cancelling the carbon tax. <laughs> We're also going to leave more money in your pocket by taking the HST off of home. <laughs> and we're going to make materially it's tax free. <laughs> and as someone who took the 97 from Billings Bridge to the Canada Town Centre, <laughs> for so many years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a long bus ride. I used to read far more books when I was a teenager and a young adult taking the bus uh, from Ottawa South to Canada when I worked at the then Corel Center, <laughs> dating myself a little bit. We announced yesterday, I announced yesterday that a conservative government under my leadership will make those monthly transit passes eligible for a 15% tax credit. And I am so excited to make more announcements in the coming weeks that will all be centered around making sure that government works for you. We know who gets ahead under Justin Trudeau. It's millionaire companies like Loblaws that get $12 million checks because you're paying the carbon tax. It's large industrial emitters who got themselves up to a 90% exemption from that carbon tax while you're paying all of the costs. Our environmental plan is a real plan that takes the climate change fight global, that puts an emphasis on technology, not taxes, and tackles other important environmental issues. Because it's 2019, it's time to finally put an end to dumping raw sewage into our rivers and lakes, and that's exactly what a conservative government will do. And we're going to get back to balanced budgets so that my kids and your kids don't have to grow up spending their entire working lives paying off the debt that Justin Trudeau has added to Canada's fiscal obligations. So I'm going to make you a deal today, all right? You get Justina elected here. And I will travel across Ontario all across Canada, partout au Québec, dans les provinces atlantiques, partout all across dans Quebec, quatre, dans to all the provinces and territories, today, to and we'll every corner every of this country. We need to get a majority government on October 21st to put an end to Justin Trudeau's scandal play government. Thanks very much, everyone. Let's go hit some doors. All right. All right, so we have time for a few questions here, Mr. Shear.
Thank you. You all hold it. Thank you very much, everyone. I think we have some questions from uh, from some of the media today. Uh, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Uh, Mr. Shear, there's a video circulating today in which Ms. McCaffrey is seen uh, her describing Faith Goldie as a girlfriend of hers. So they go out for wine and for cocktails, and that she considers her to be wonderful. Wondering how you felt about your candidate having that kind of relationship with somebody who's been banned from Facebook for off offensive hate speech and for someone who many people consider to be a white supremacist. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I've uh, let my uh, let the candidate's statement on that issue speak for itself. I have uh, obviously made it clear that I won't have anything uh, to do with that individual. Uh, and as I said the other day, we're going to see this from Liberals from now until Election Day, trying to do everything they can to distract from their leader's lies, their leader's broken promises, and the fact that their leader, Justin Trudeau, still has not come out to denounce anti-Semitic statements from one of his candidates. So we're going to continue to focus on the issues that are important to Canadians, making life more affordable, making sure that a government lives within its means to put more money in their pockets so that they can get ahead. Mr. Sir, yesterday in Mississauga, you were asked about your candidate there, uh, Gauda Mellick, about whether or not she had been, uh, been rejected by the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party. You said you didn't know that to be true. Have you asked about that now? Have you found out whether or not she was rejected by, by Patrick Brown's uh, Progressive Conservatives? And are you concerned about, by the fact that she was given a red light by the uh, as I said, uh, the candidate in question uh, withdrew from the nomination race. Mr. Sheer, um, Mr. Sheer, en acceptant de garder à bord des candidats comme ça, comme on a vu hier, by keeping candidates uh, uh, like uh, what we saw yesterday and today, are you not uh, in uh, a way accepting uh, some of the comments uh, they have made? Well, every party has an obligation uh, to uh, ensure uh, that uh, their uh, candidates uh, have uh, not uh, used uh, uh, words uh, or made uh, comments uh, that are uh, defamatory uh, or uh, insult uh, people. Uh, our campaign did exactly the same thing, and when there are some issues that are raised, well, our candidates did the right thing and apologized for those words. But that's not the case with Justin Trudeau. He worked with his candidate in saint Leonard Saint-Michel in order to hide his anti-Semitic comments. So that's the difference. Justin Trudeau has never taken responsibility for his own actions. But uh, they've been attacking other candidates. But there are 37 or 38 days until October 21st, and you can be sure that the Liberals will be doing everything uh, they can every day to distract people away from their record. Now, there is some possibility uh, that's being said that the uh, Canadians, that the Liberal government wants to tax uh, people on their principal residence uh, when we know that that's not true. Are you not uh, misleading Canadians? Well, the fact is that before 2015, Justin Trudeau said he would lower taxes for the middle uh, class and did the opposite. So it's clear that he says a lot of things before the election that he has no intention of doing after he gets elected. Now, a very important member of parliament in the Liberal Party, he's not a backbencher, he's a, a member of parliament who's very close to Mr. Trudeau. He was a star candidate for the Liberal Party, and it's clear that they bring out these ideas before before the election and then after the election they will need more money and have to raise taxes. So it's clear that this is the type of policy that Liberals are uh, considering. This is a high profile Liberal Member of Parliament very close to Justin Trudeau uh, and I don't buy for a second when they say that they're not going to do something uh, because we've seen this before. In 2015 they said they were going to lower taxes on middle class Canadians. In fact they've raised taxes. Catherine McKenna was asked point blank whether or not she would raise the carbon tax after this election and she she ran away and said that she couldn't answer that question because she was worried about winning her seat. So it's quite clear that in order to win their seats and win this election, they were prepared to say anything. But we can be darn sure that after the election, when they don't need the votes of Canadians, but they still need the money, this is when they are going to bring forward ideas like this. And homeowners who are counting on uh, the sale of their home when they reach their retirement age, or, or couples who have had to switch jobs or move uh, due to uh, factors that mean that they've only been in their home for a short 
short period of time, know that under the Liberals, they will have to pay ta higher taxes. Mia Rabson from the Canadian Press. Uh, there's a group calling themselves Conservatives United Against Hate that have released a series of uh, Facebook images from your candidate in Mississauga Streetsville saying that they are, she's, she's posted homophobic, racist images, uh, statements. Have you seen these? Are you concerned about it? And do you still stand beside her as a candidate? I point to I point the fact that uh, the candidate in question has addressed these types of things. She has reiterated uh, her support for uh, uh, multiculturalism and people from all faiths and all backgrounds, and she has uh, expressed regret for some of the things that she had shared in the past. And I accept that from her. And uh, and uh, I would again point out the fact that unlike our campaign, which is being open and transparent with Canadians when these things are brought up, Justin Trudeau and his senior officials were working to keep hidden the anti-Semitic comments of a candidate in Montreal. That candidate himself blew the whistle on the fact that all of his anti-Semitic remarks were well known to Justin Trudeau and those senior officials and that they were trying to come up with some kind of a scheme to either keep them hidden or deal with the comms problem if they ever came to light. So that's a clear contrast between their campaign and our campaign. Oui, alors euh, notre candidat a adressé yes, euh, cette, euh, candidate euh, les, euh, les messages qu'elle a, a partagés euh, euh, dans le passé. Elle a réaffirmé son appui pour les, les gens de tous les droits, de toutes les euh, ethnicités. Elle a pour les gens de toutes les droits, de toutes les ethnicités. Elle a pour les gens de toutes les droits, de toutes les ethnicités. Elle a pour les pour les types de messages qu'elle a put out there. Très, très, très clair contraste entre But there's a very clear contrast between our contrat, our campaign, and the Liberal campaign because Justin Trudeau worked with their candidate in St. Leonard to hide the anti-Semitic messages that he had put out. So the contrast between the Liberal campaign and our campaign is quite clear. There was a photograph that sort of became famous called The Resistance. You posed with several other Conservative premiers saying you were going to join forces to, to go against Justin Trudeau. Several of those premiers and other Conservative leader in Nova Scotia say they won't campaign for you this, this campaign. What do you, what do you take away from that? Uh, we have all been on the same page. The people in that photograph, uh, premiers of provinces where the carbon tax is being imposed, we have all been very clear that we are going to work hard to fight back against the carbon tax. The good news is that on October 21st, those premiers, premiers of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, and New Brunswick, uh, will not have to fight the carbon tax because job number one of a conservative government is going to be to cancel the carbon tax. <laughs> J'ai travaillé avec uh, tous les premiers ministres des provinces qui uh, all the premiers of the provinces uh, that are opposed to the carbon tax and we will continue to do that. But the good news for all the provinces where the carbon tax has been imposed by the federal government is that on October 24th they will no longer have to fight that carbon tax because a conservative government our first bill introduced will be a bill to cancel the carbon tax. That is a very clear commitment from us. Free a question, but she left without taking any questions. So, did you ask her? You, I, I'm assuming your your team would have known that she did have a friendship with Faith Goldie. And given the controversy around Faith Goldie, did your team ask her if she's still friends with this individual? Uh, I understand that uh, Justina has addressed uh, the uh, that issue here this morning. She has uh, put out a statement that addresses that. So I'll let I'll let that speak for itself. And uh, we're all going out to do other uh, activities, other campaign types of things today. Uh, you said uh, that uh, you talked about refugees crossing the border, at, specifically into Quebec. And you said, well, people have to wait longer because some are skipping the line and jumping the queue without coming into Canada. I'm wondering why you say skipping the queue, because there is, there is no queue. There are clearly limited resources that a government has to provide to refugees when they come to Canada. And the point I'm making is that when someone crosses in from upstate New York, that is a different type of thing than when someone is waiting in a refugee camp, when someone would be killed if they left the camp, when they're fleeing civil war and natural disasters. That is the point I was making in that we have a system in this country where we, uh, the expectation is that when people have arrived at a country where they are no longer facing that type of persecution, that they make their refugee claim there. That is the case for official border crossings all across this country. And that is something that needs to be addressed so that we don't have thousands and thousands of people crossing over into Canada in between official border crossings. Hey. Alors, le point est que the point is 
that it's something quite different to have people traveling to Canada, uh, to New York. It's very different between people who are in refugee camps, who are fearing for their life uh, because of uh, natural disasters or civil war. That's completely different. And the government has a limited ability to deliver services to people who are fleeing that type of danger. So the point I'm making is that it's not the same as someone who's already arrived in a country and is not facing civil war or that sort of thing. And we are asking all people who come to Canada to follow the rules. All right, thanks very much, everyone. Let's go hit some doors. Thanks very much.